I always wondered what was going to happen once the economy collapsed. Am I a fake entrepreneur or am I a real one? What's the difference? The fake entrepreneur cannot make it on difficult economies. The real entrepreneur thrives no matter what the economic landscape looks like. We're going to be talking today about reverse engineering competitors. This is going to be a lesson for people that are practical. If you are practical, if you're a practitioner, if you enjoy actually doing things and trying to control your own destiny, well, this is going to be for you. If you are a dreamer, if you are into wasting time and binge watching shows and just being all doom and gloom and Debbie Downer, then this might not be a lesson for you. I want to help you guys get ideas rolling and get out of analysis paralysis. I want to help you guys learn how to understand what you should be doing and get it done. Stop being paralyzed in regards to what should I talk about, what should I do, how much should I do, what type of things should I do or talk about, should I do podcasts, should I do videos, should I do articles, should I do, what the heck should I do in order for me to get the attention? Because again, I'm going to just take one minute to go over the battle plan for COVID-19. Just a quick recap, all right? In order to get this done, you got to have an idea on what type of content you're going to put out. What is your message? What is your superpower? So this is a strategy. So if you guys haven't been here uh, around for a while, if you haven't been on my content, uh, you might have not seen me talking about the seven-step formula. Omnipresence, you want to be everywhere. You want to talk with reality, tell them about what's going on, give them the reality of the world and how you can help them with your information. Be a stabilizing influence. Don't be a Debbie Donner. Be a positive individual, a positive influence over them. That's going to be the best way to go about it. Provide value. Build audiences. Build lists. Build audiences of people that you can help, continue helping and providing value with. You do that by doing a lot of Facebook Lives, YouTube Lives, Instagram content, Instagram TV, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, LinkedIn, email broadcast, communication, a lot of communication, omnipresent. And that's, that's exactly how you want to go about these first five steps. A lot of communication. You want to provide a ton of value because when you have a lot of people that listen to you, in my case, for example, I have right now 40 people on my Facebook Live. Some more people are going to keep on joining, right? So this video gets seen thousands of times by the time that we're done, all organically without me investing a single penny on advertising. Why? Because I'm providing value. I'm giving them something that is going to help them with their business. I'm giving you something that is going to help you improve your marketing. And right now, guess what? Marketing has become more important than ever because if you don't know how to market, you don't know how to sell on a bad economy. When the economy is booming, it's so much easier to be able to get a business up and running. It's always a challenge no matter what. Being an entrepreneur is never an easy thing. But when the economy has gone through a meltdown, it makes it that much more challenging. I can tell you one thing that I'm excited about. I have been an entrepreneur only during a booming economy. So I always wondered what was going to happen when the economy started collapsing. Because I knew it was going to happen at some point. I didn't know exactly when it was going to happen, but I knew it would happen at some point. We've been on a growing economy since 2008, 2009, since the economy collapsed back in the real estate explosion that we went through, right? The uh, subprime mortgage market that we went through in the United States. This caused a recession in the United States, and we started recovering shortly after. So we've been expanding for the last 12 years in this particular economy. I built my business really starting in 2012. Natural Slim was created in the United States 2010, but we really didn't do much until really 2012 with our YouTube channel and our content strategy and everything. So we started doing Natural Slim, going heavy at that. I started doing my own brand, which is a bed sheets brand, if you guys don't know that story. And I started doing all those things in the middle of an economic expansion, the agency, AGM Marketing, my agency, which has 60 staff now and we do a lot of great marketing for a lot of great people. We started five years ago, and it was in the middle of an economic expansion. And because of that, I always wondered what was going to happen once the economy collapsed. Am I a fake entrepreneur or am I a real one? What's the difference? The fake entrepreneur cannot make it on difficult economies. The real entrepreneur thrives no matter what the economic landscape looks like. And that's a reality, and I have been seeing it. For example, here in Natural Slim, we're breaking records. 
We're breaking records week after week, and we are getting more attention than ever. If you look at my dad, if you look at his YouTube channel, if his Facebook page, and our content, we're getting more attention than we've ever gotten ever before in history. Some of our accounts are booming. I am doing some great things with some of the people that I work with every single day. Our actual clients are full of incredible results across the board, especially people that were set up with the online world. They were set up with pages and YouTube channels and online shops and they knew how to sell online and they have memberships and products they can sell or Amazon brands. These guys are doing okay. We are actually ourselves in natural sense, we're breaking records. So because of that, I'm here today to talk to you guys about, hey, guess what? I was right. I always had this feeling and this idea that if you really became a master marketer, there's no economy that could hit you. There's no financial condition that can actually affect you in the world. You control your own destiny. That is the beauty of marketing. In our case, we have a government shutdown. We have a countrywide shutdown. Places are shut down. Hey, today I had my kids with me because uh, these days, as you guys can probably understand, we are spending more time with our kids than usual or with our family than usual. It's great. We are getting closer up with our families. That's one of the silver linings that we all have in front of us, right? So what I can tell you is that a month ago, I used to go to Starbucks, 6 p.m. close, 4 p.m. close. I went there today and they close at 2 p.m. What the heck? They close at 2 p.m. now? So what I would tell you is that we're going through a government shutdown. We're going through all these things right now. And still, despite that, I got people buying my stuff. I got people actually purchasing products, purchasing services, buying digital memberships, and all that stuff is happening. So we're not about to be done in this e-commerce online world. We're just getting started. So again, my job is to tell you guys that the opportunity is large for those ones that actually obsess over becoming good at marketing. How do you become a good at marketer? I wasn't a good marketer. I actually was no one. A few years ago, I didn't even know what the heck I was gonna do with my life. Having gone bankrupt and having to restart and rebuild myself from no idea what even from. I was a good tennis player growing up. I messed around in life a lot. I got into a lot of trouble. I wasn't a good student. What the heck do I have? I just dedicated a lot of time to becoming a good marketer by studying because at first, I wanted to be able to make some money. And now I want to be able to help a lot of people because I have made a lot of money. So my obsession has become helping you guys along the way. If you become a good marketer, meaning that you know how to capture attention, marketer equals a capturing attention. A bad marketer equals no attention capturing. It's as simple as that. If you're a good marketer, you know how to capture attention. There's another element to it, but we're not going to get too much into it, but it's basically over here you see that I'm putting on the step number six of the formula, becoming an expert marketer. Why? Because I do see marketers that know how to capture attention, quote unquote. They know how to capture attention, but they don't know how to sell their products and services. And that's also a problem. And you gotta know how to sell. Also, you gotta know how to get people interested in your offers, because if you have a billion followers, but your offers are absolutely terrible, then that's also gonna present a problem. Now, if you have a lot of followers, you might have at least enough to be able to pay your rent or you know, food or things like that, because you have a lot of it. So attention is senior, but if you don't know how to sell to people, that's also gonna present a problem. So this is your battle plan for this particular era. And moving forward for the next couple of years, this is how you wanna win the business game in today's environment. Omnipresence, you wanna be everywhere? You wanna talk with reality? You want to be a stabilizing influence? You want to provide value? You want to build audiences? Why do you want to build audiences? Because if you build audiences, you become a marketing expert. And you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to show you something practical about the process of building audiences. Because people ask me, what are you talking about building audiences? Manuel, when you say building digital audiences, what the heck are you talking about? What do you say? You talk about things like digital footprints. What does that even mean? Well, I'm going to give you guys just a very basic overview of what that means in the digital world and how simple it is to get that done. And then you're gonna be able to sell to your best audiences, okay? So you gotta have that plan in place. And let me go back over here, reversing your competitors. And I have a formula for you guys today that I want you to implement because if you don't have a clue, okay? If you don't have a clue 
on how to market your products, how to be omnipresent, what to talk about. You don't even know where to start and you are going through analysis paralysis and I'm calling this also a battle plan. My battle plan for reverse engineering and getting you out of analysis paralysis. So check this out, okay? So when it comes to how do you get started, what do you do? The number one thing that you gotta do is research. And what I mean by research is specifically making a list of competitors. And that's why I have it here. Make a list of what? Competitors. And I know one of you guys are gonna be telling me, Manuel, my business is very unique and I don't have competitors. And listen, if you don't have competitors, you don't really have a business unless your name is Elon Musk or unless your name is Steve Jobs. These guys were actually out there in front of the world and creating technology that didn't even exist yet. And yes, they didn't have any competitors. In your case, generally, 99.99999% of you guys are going to have competitors. So you gotta figure out who they are. They do exist. You're not that special. I'm not that special, all right? So you gotta figure out who out there has a product, a service, a business that is somehow similar to what your business is and what you do. Their products and their offerings are similar to what you offer and what your products are. Whether you have an Amazon brand, whether you're a realtor, whether you're an e-commerce entrepreneur, whether you have a software, you have a service, no matter what you are, you have somebody out there in the world, in your country, that is probably doing something very similar to what you're doing, and a lot of them are not doing it correctly, but a lot of them are having success. So you wanna do a research, and at this point, at this stage, step one and two, is that you wanna figure out what is your list of competitors, and what I say to people is that look, I want you to make a pretty big list. And when I say a pretty big list, I'm talking about make a list of 50 competitors, 50 of them, all right? Make a list of 50 businesses that now are gonna help you with the rest of the steps, all right? So you wanna make that list because that's, I'm talking about this is your process to becoming a creative. You wanna get your creativity started. You wanna make sure that you get things going and start getting some ideas rolling because it's like, you know how the uh, offers, uh, book offers, the writers, they have been talking about this thing called writer's block for ages, right? It gets to a point that they don't even know what to write about. Even then, being super creative, and it happens to me because I happen to be a copywriter myself. I know how to write messages, something that I developed throughout the years. Sometimes I sit down and I don't know what to write about. If you guys have access to my course, the Facebook Masters, in it, every single lesson has a, an article of sorts in it. That was me writing it. So sometimes I actually had to write a lot of descriptions and information about it so people can understand what it is that I'm covering on that video. So sometimes you will wonder, what the heck do I write about? I don't even know. I, I mean, what do people, and then you just wanna go away and drop everything and drop the pen and go and leave. That is actually very, very common for people that are creatives. How do you get your creativity going? How do you get your creative juices flowing? You research. You understand what other people are doing. You make a list of your competitors and you look at them for inspiration ideas. So you gotta make that list of competitors. And once you have that list, you're gonna move on to studying social channels, all right? What do I mean by that? Well, you look at their Facebook page. You go back and you see throughout their history what they have done what content they put out there organically. I'm not talking about paid advertising. There's two things that you can do on social media. You can do organic content, which just gets posted there naturally for free without investing advertising on it, or you can actually create content and advertise it to reach more people. Simple example over here, just to be very practical with you guys, I am inside my Facebook page right here. You see my Facebook page here. I'm gonna look for a sponsored ad. So for example here, that's Ollie, right? That's Ollie Rodriguez, one of my top guys, Chief Operations Officer of AGM. And he's even saying, Manuel is going live soon, stay tuned. He's the one that's promoting the 15 day challenge. All right, so that's an example of content, right? And that's organic, he's not paying for that. What's a paid one? Well, this one right here, look at this one. This is on my Facebook newsfeed. That is a sponsored ad. Shopify Plus is paying for that particular spot right there. 
learn how Jungalo increased returning customers by 26% and increased sales 61%. Read their story, okay? That is a an actual paid advertising. So you see how there's two worlds. Let's keep going over here. Nancy Cartwright, good friend of mine, an actual client from AGM. If you don't know who she is, that's the voice of Bart Simpson. Any of you guys don't know who Bart Simpson is, you might not live in the United States, because I don't know, this guy is huge across the world. But Bart Simpson is an absolute legend, right? So this is the voice. And she's doing content. That's organic content. Who's that in my driveway? Oh, just a gardener. Never mind. Okay, so this one, Traffic and Conversion Summit, even though they do a lot of promotion, you can see here that this is not a sponsored because under where it says yesterday, it will say if it's a sponsored ad or not. So that one is not sponsored. That is organic. This right here, this is my dad's post from our brand, Metabolismo TV, which you guys might have heard about. I've talked about it quite a bit. John Loomer Digital, that's a competitor. Talk about actual competitors for myself, right? I don't really care about it because I actually appreciate people that are in my industry that I've actually learned from him throughout the years. So I don't consider him a competitor. I consider him somebody that is actually on my same market and I'm not trying to take his business and he's not trying to take my business. Dr. Rick Berg, look at that. This one, notice something that's different on this one. It says sponsored right there. That right there means that we are paying for that spot. AGM is paying to find a spot inside this particular feed for Manuel Suarez. This is actually my personal feed on my personal profile. And you can see here we have an actual carousel ad. Uh, we're promoting the Keto Challenge. You have a carousel ad and we are paying for that spot. And that's just basically the simplicity of paid versus sponsored. I just wanted to give you guys that basic, basic information on how social media advertising works. The same thing happens on Instagram, the same thing happens on Facebook, and very shortly the same thing is going to happen on Instagram TV at some point. So we got Facebook, Instagram, we got Messenger, Instagram TV. All these platforms are opportunities for you to get your message as an advertiser in front of them. But there's two things that you gotta do. You gotta do organic, which is your content strategy, and then you gotta do paid, which is your content strategy distributed via advertising. So you can reach more people that if you only did organic, you would never reach. We do both. At AGM, we do both of them. You're gonna see me omnipresent. You're gonna see Manuel Suarez everywhere in as many places as possible. You see me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Instagram TV. You see me on stories on Instagram, on Facebook stories. You see me on LinkedIn. You see me on TikTok. You see me everywhere, right? I can tell you there's two places that I don't do anything in, which is Snapchat and Twitter. I think we were doing something on Twitter. I don't think we are ever doing something there. It was never one of my favorite platforms. But any opportunity that you have to get your message out there, that's an opportunity to spread your message and your word and get people's attention so you can eventually sell them something. Remember the following route, right? You gotta do omnipresence and provide value. You gotta build audiences and then you can actually sell them things. That's the sequence that most people have upside down and that's why they fail. The secret to social media is just that. On social media, people that fail are generally failing because they're not providing value first. They're not on first contact building a relationship. They're simply just trying to sell them something. That's how I became successful. I listened to other people. I had a series of people that I paid attention to and I got into practice and I got stuff done.